Welcome to School of Castanets News. And um, Tim, where is your... Uh, I've just been passed a very important news story. I wish you'd pass me some information about what I was supposed to wear. The email. This morning. No email. Anyway, the big news this month is all the graduates we have to celebrate. And now I know about them. You I know, know about you the do graduates. know about those. You do know about those. So there's, um, we're going to go out to a couple of um, exceptionally uh, gifted and good-looking guys over on. If you look down the our field there, team, we're, we're out on the field team. We're going to go over to Tim and Jacko out in the field to uh, go through and celebrate this month's graduates. So if you can look on the screen. Over. So thank you for the uh, lovely introduction, Tim and Jacko. <laughs> this makes it the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, So thank you for the uh, lovely introduction, Tim and Jacko. I don't know what to say about that. So, this is fine. I thought it was a field remember, team. Hopefully we remembered what that was. Anyway, so yes, we're here. We're ready. We have got the March graduates. This is the second time we've done this. And Tim enjoyed himself so much last time. They, they, you're in for a cracker. Um, I squealed with delight when you told me we were doing this today. Got, we've got um, quite a few to get through. So I think we just, we just crack just on crack straight into it. Yeah, so um, no, roll, it, roll, roll the VT. Roll, roll the theme tune. Bounce along. So first it's up, a muscle up, Scott Merlo. Oh, fancy graphics, Jacko. Go yeah, on, school. we've upgraded Whoa. things. It's a muscle up, else it. You like that? I like that. <laughs> oh, that, that was, that was a good fantastic one. muscle up. I, I like the... Uh... Now, you may or may not recognise the name Merlo. I know. That's so Scotty they're, Too Hotty. They're Scotty, <laughs> Scotty Too Hotty. And Jess Merlo is recently on the podcast as a guest. Um, there is a competition to see who is the best at calisthenics in their house. So this is um, husband and wife. And I'm sorry, I'd, I'm sorry to, well, I'm, am I sorry? I'm sorry because I'm supporting the blokes. And Scott, this is great. I think your wife is better at calisthenics than you. He's staying in his strong range there. Oh, oh, yeah, I think he was going to go for a second one, but I cut him off. Tim, did you, mate, I feel like you're taking this seriously, the graduates. Now, can you pronounce <laughs> that's this? How, that, that's how impressed you were. We'll see one. Don't want to see another one. Let's move <laughs> oh, on. what, do you want to get? Oh, you have no, to. no, I'm going. It was, it was a solid. It was onward. a solid um, ring muscle up. There was not onward. too much else to say about it. Pawan. Uh, Pawan, frog, frog stand. 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 Ooh, yeah, good. Nailed it. Look at that. The time. Oh, hello. Hello, spread it. Press up. One's it? No. Oh, just come back oh, down. Love right it. Down. That was nicely controlled, though. I know. Things I liked about this was when i first saw this video we take both knees off and then it was that Ooh. little section there where shoulders looked like we were dropping down i got a little bit worried it was gonna go we were going down but held the strength i went for a, a different technique tim you'd normally lock your arms out and then the legs yeah i seem to be, that seems to be something which is fairly i like that unique think, yeah not unique but yeah i like to lock the arms out um it's probably slightly the thing that this if we give a little bit of education as well to this rather than just so that like push out with the legs that bit's hard i actually thought he was going to struggle to hold that yeah. because that's the bit when you straighten the arms and straighten the legs you've got a lot going on which you need to try and control so if you straighten the arms first then you put the legs up you've taken one variable out well yeah so one the, of the variables the control is easier but the strength those legs moving help the yeah. press um and so it takes heart to, to go arms first and then legs second. More control, but that takes a little bit more strength, yeah. probably. I've actually, the other thing I'll do just from moving forward, it's great. I love it. Um, you can straighten that line up a little bit by going back to war. So if, if you're working yes. your front to handstand and you finish up in that position, you're going, right, I've got the strength. I know the movement pattern. I want to straighten it up. Your job is back to the wall and start to work into getting into a more vertical position. That, yeah. yeah, get those shoulders a little bit, or well, biceps um, in line with the ears, a bit more, push the chest through. Keep the core tight, straight, strong, and long, and then that's going to look really tidy. And those good of us, job. Those of us that have been working a long time on our frog to handstand, that yeah feels amazing. And he's held that for a long time. Things are working really. I like hard there, the um, I like the actual little bit of a uh, freestyle there at the end. It looks cool. Even he finishes that as well. It's just cooling. Cool, Flam flamboyant with the, with the now, next Mr. Robinson, Jake Robinson from the virtual classroom. He looks serious. This is going to be serious. Gone for the t-shirt tucked into the shorts, Jake. Talks about that one. Oh, wait. Ooh. 
oh, easy looking. That was good, you. wasn't it? Yeah, that was. I good. think that was one of those where it was like when he was setting up. I was with, I was a bit worried. I was sort of like, how? What's how? And then when he hit that, yep. I was thinking, how long's he gonna hold that for? And then the longer it went on, I got more and more and more and more and more impressed. The way he's looking around, he's just showboating. Pointers for Jake. Yeah. I would go, mate, love it. It's looking really good because you are just taking your eyes off the camera going, you're looking at me. Um, I'd work a little bit more at the top arm because you can see ear coming through to, to the shoulder there. Yeah. You're cranking everything that you've got in there to try and hold that position. So just keep working that top arm. But, mate, you've got the movement pattern nailed down. Just a little bit of strength in that top arm to make that look super tidy. Jacko actually, there's a, I mean, there's a, there's a picture oh, of us doing a double flag and there's yeah. a story behind it. <laughs> but Jacko gets a slightly upset with it because his head is beautifully symmetrical, whereas I am doing exactly what you're doing, Jake. And it doesn't quite complete the picture because i'm out of alignment there's something here at the foot that we are like i when i'm really straining you see people doing that and it, i do it as well that and i remember the um the sports therapist guy at staffordshire talking about some things i don't think we ever dialed down to exactly what was happening in that connected chain but that that top it, it's the top foot different to the the bottom one in that position um and that's just you see it just cranking in. It's like Fascial a, tension, yeah. trying to find as much as it can. Yeah, good. Like that one. So onward, Jacko. Moving forward. Now, this is with a band, but yep. this was the first sent a message. Can you pronounce that? I'm going to you to. In case I butcher it like yeah. that. <laughs> that was it. And she was so like first time she'd ever done it with the green band. And I thought that deserves it's a step yep. towards and that is you know we are going to celebrate the important landmarks along the way and this i think i saw this one is just getting the movement pattern right and when you've got the movement pattern right that's one of the components ticks off and then you can go and worry about the strength and speed and exactly and the and the thing is with um with these movements it's whether like if if you want to get to the point where you can do a muscle with a green band and you don't want to you're not bothered about doing it without it then that's also cool like that's your own choice so this was um Exciting to see the first one. So he's trying to get that line through, getting the chest past the bar. Ooh, nice. Searches for it. Bang. Hits it and goes. She way above and the bar. And actually flew well. up. So Super snappy from the bottom. I like that little setup. Um, yeah. So I'm thinking that there's there's no reason why she can't do that with a purple band, I think. Drop them down. Keep the overload coming. That's looking good. Yeah. like that one. Next up. Mr. Reese Davies, Davis. aka Reese the Jack. This is a graduation for the low from the low body. the first yeah. graduation from the low body foundations yeah. class. It's I, tidy. I felt tidy like tidy squat. Yeah. Reese was quite pleased with himself that he could graduate so quickly. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, yeah, it goes super low. Boom. So what's next? The nice oh. pistol. If he fancies it. You got a pistol, Reese. Let us know. Um, you probably have with that sort of squat. If you can shift your weight in that bottom position, you are easily going to knock out some reps. Yeah. And just talk to the people about um, why it might be super important to actually be able to move. Like, just so the squat means that everything's functioning well. Just a little bit about anything about the the importance of having those hips. So whether he wants to do a handstand or wants to do a human flag or whatever going well can you whether you can squat effectively and efficiently or not what does that matter but just the fact that if everything if that lower body is functioning those hips are sat in a, in, in good position we're not super tight the effect that might have on the trunk on the shoulder um, yeah it's just about looking at the system as a whole really instead of going well my shoulders can do a human flag we just need, we need to be able to move the whole entire chain. And the, what the squat does is it shows us that we've got good lower body functioning mechanics effectively. You can get away. You can do a flag if you've got horrible squat mechanics. You don't need to be able to do a squat to do something, some of the more upper body based uh, calisthenics movements. But if we're interested in complete movement and having functioning bodies that are going to be able to respond to whatever we want to do with them, then we need to have a squat pattern. It's one of the most basic foundation movements the human body has and should be able to maintain. The only reason we lose our ability to squat is because we get jacked up from not accessing and utilizing these kind of movement patterns. You go to India, that's how people will sit all day. Like we get lots of messages. People go, yeah. we show squat, and they're like, what are you guys talking about? That's why I haven't done like that every day. <laughs> but they use their squat patterns. We don't in the West. So we, we lose the chairs like we are doing now. Yeah. So we need to get out soon of our chairs. Right. So, um, Uncle, Uncle Jay, Jay, yes. Um, with the uh, um, well, we'll yeah, well, let, we can talk. Let's go. Th so we're going to back to Teresa one more time, just because it's beautiful, lovely. Boom! 
Oh, now the faux bar. The faux bar muscle up. This is an important one because we learn to muscle up like this on a, on a similar set of um, handles at the gym where you've got that space in between. And you have to be careful because it will come back and bite you on the bottom when you try and shift to a straight bar because these effectively give you the same opportunity that like you get on the rings. Yes. You can push your That's chest between the two, um, which means that you actually, you can use that space to get over. You haven't got to get around the bar, which means you actually don't need to get as much speed and power. You don't need to go as high because you can shift your body weight through. But however, if that's happy, if that makes you happy. Yeah. And it's a step towards the, the, I mean, if before, whilst you were just doing pull-ups previously on that, it's a step towards doing your first um, bar muscle up for sure. Nice. But just understanding that, if you're going to go with the full straight bar, you're going to ha- you can't go through it, so we have to go a little bit higher, and we have to come around it a little bit more. But it's still got the action. It's, we can probably keep a, a sort of slightly straighter uh, body line position, but the whole it's got the whole action of coming um, where are we up and through. Sorry, here we go. So the whole action of going in and then around to yeah. get on top of it. Yeah, definitely just getting that midline tighter so you can transfer more force. So you're going to take that into a straight bar. You're going to need to have that um, connection through the chain to, to get the power. Otherwise, you're just going to, it's an energy leak, effectively. Go back to what we were talking about with the squat. If, um, if Reese is dropping through his squat, his knees are bumping together or they're coming inward, it's an energy leak. If you wanted to be able to put down high amount of force, if you wanted to put a heavy deadlift or a squat down, same applies with the midsection on the muscle up. We need to be able to keep that tight to transfer force through the chain. The thing about it is he's flipping, he pulls fast. Yeah, no, he's getting up there. Boom. Like he ain't messing about. Quick, so he's strong. Yeah, no, I think he has. Um, Slobodan Stokovsky. You've, you've not helped yourself. With names, you? I know, it's difficult. I love it. But we're getting it's multicultural it's global. and global. Yeah. Love it. Um, In his house. First handstand. This is nice as well. Techers kick up, nailed it. Oh. Tunes on in the background. And he starts talking. <laughs> so what I, liked, what I, to like, I took the sound off a lot of the other ones, but what I loved was I don't know what language it is, but the he's obviously got whoever's filming. We all know that we, is something like well done in well done. That was an amazing handstand in a foreign language. We all know that satisfaction. If you got there and you've done your handstand, you get it. Yeah. You wanna you wanna celebrate. Yeah. Good job. And it was lovely line, really nice. Oh, this looks it. like a proper gym jacko. This yes, serious. You might get in trouble here for doing calisthenics well, in the spot. Yeah, there a rig. is a bar there just in the corner. So Connor, Gordon, Snee. Right. Never trust a moment with two first names. Muscle up. Connor Gordon. They're two first names, aren't they? Uh, you going, you going muscle up? That's what mm-hmm. we should do, actually. You should do like a, what do you think it's going to be? Go on. Bar muscle up. Because it could be like could a be back lever. Back lever. Boom. Whoa. Up above the rig. Second one. Boom. How do you like those apples? Those are, yeah. Quick, powerful. Snappy. Again, this is interesting. We yeah. talked a bit about this um, recently around staying in strong ranges. So you can see there that Connor's got his arm, keeping his arms bent. Now, this guy's strong because he's been able yeah. to pull from that position. Doing an awesome job of getting the speed, using a little bit of a, of a kipping movement to get up there as well. But to get that looking super clean and, and straight, what we want to be able to do is try and get his arms a bit straighter, which means we're then going to have to get stronger at end range, which is not easy. But again, you've got the movement pattern. And I've been reading up a little bit on skill acquisition, Jacker, recently. Mm-hmm. And just be aware that when you're training things like muscle-ups or you teach yourself a new skill, it's easy to learn it incorrectly, but it's very difficult to change it yeah. to, if you want to read yeah, it. Yeah, so if you, you wanted to straighten his arms and straighten his body. You've now taught your brain how to move it, how to do a yeah. muscle-up like that. So if you wanted to go and change it to go through a four-inch movement, you may not. That might be perfect for you. You've done yeah. a muscle-up. You might be happy to crack on. If you wanted to move it, just be aware that it's actually taking the time to learn it in the way that you want to perform it is going to make it a little bit easier for you down the line. But I like that. Look as yeah. fast and smooth. I think it's one of the, that just on that point. It's one of the reasons why a bar muscle up sometimes can feel so impossible when you first do it because you spent you could have spent ten years like I've done, or maybe even longer doing pull ups where just stopping when the bar reaches yeah. your chin, and then trying to tell your brain after after that many years, hold on, son, we're going we we wanted to go a bit further. That's not the end of the road. It's it's you're just not used to it. It gets one thing I want to just point out is that. Um, yeah, body like arms straighter and body line straighter if he wants to it to be like super super clean. But he gets um, a couple of things that he, key things that he gets right uh, principles to follow. He pushes he pushes through and he gets his chest 
past the, I know the line with his legs has gone, but he's got his chest past the line of the bar. Yeah. So he can start to pull up on a diagonal and then he pulls fast on that diagonal and gets the bar to his hips. You get the bar to your hips, you, you're laughing. Yeah. Um, but that's just the difference between a sort of a more kipping style muscle up. You're using, you're using those hips, up, you're pulling the yeah. hips up to the bar and then flicking yourself above it. You have to just, it's whatever you choose that you want to do and how you want to move. Like it. Next one. What do you reckon it's going to be? <laughs> I'm hoping that Griffith is going to be a false grip ring muscle. He could be. Back lever. Oh, yeah. Or handstand. Give it some. I'd like to see somebody just like set up like that and just go on the floor and do a frog handstand. <laughs> <laughs> right. Emil Tron- Troll Klin. Member of the virtual Man classroom. Of many languages, Jacko. I am. Solid, false. Up, this is nice. Good. Yeah. Oh, and a turnout. So that turnout makes a difference for people with working on the false grip. Yeah. Means close the oh. chest. Smooth. The hardest bit about that was getting out of the dip. Transition real nice. Yeah. That's the difference with the ring muscle. You've got down. that strength to play with. You can literally just take your time in that transition. You don't have to catapult yourself through if you can Second pull round. high in the muscle. Uh, sorry, out. in false grip. Yeah. Quality nice little setup with the old yeah. rings attached to the yeah, yeah, yeah. That is we a happy you. boy. Yeah, we the thumbs you. up. The thumbs nah, up. I saw this one. Now, this one, need, you need the sound on for this one. Hopefully, it comes through. There's a squeal coming up. Claire on. Crocs, 1978. Now, this was her first attempt ever. There's so much, ama- there's so much of this that's amazing. Is that a muscle? Um, is that a pull-up bar or a bike rack? <laughs> <laughs> it is. Allowing her to redefine impossible at home. What is that a duck in um, the front of it? This is there's a duck. Day. But this is awesome. There's I, the bike I, rack. I'm not, I'm not being like flippant about it. I, I, I think that people setting stuff up for themselves in the house like this and redefining the possible is what calisthenics is all about. Just get it done. Yeah. So she's never d- tried to do a, a muscle up before or anything. She's, she's working with her rings. She's got her set up at home. And uh, I think this to me... Um, encapsulates everything that we define the impossible means we get the we get the volume up we get sound engineer where's the sound engineer sound sound that'd be the best we can do Turn it up. is that right we're like we're up. right she even talks us through she's she's, she's mentally she's told the that dog bit she, she was preparing what she was going to do she said look duck watch this <laughs> say to the dog she was like pull this is a we must pull into the dip. script this the is what it looks like think about it think, visualize it yep. this is happening Strong grip. we're going through yeah just count down. Blast off. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Now that is what redefining your impossible is all about. To the point where you're actually surprised that you managed to yeah. do it. And that isn't, I think that is genuine. She has not set that up. I love and, that. Uh, that is just amazing to see. Good work, and, Claire. Uh, that was great. That that red thin band is not, if you can do one of the red thin bands, you are not far away. Keep working on your dip strength, uh, getting super dip on dip deep on your dips and and, and strong in those uh, with a pause at the top in those false grip uh, ring muscle ups and you are going to be it's going from a dead position as well like dead hang there's no momentum getting into that as well yeah Duck needs to get on board though (laughs) he's having a good look though yeah, I'm going to get one of them bike racks. That looks good. <laughs> so, yeah, I love that. It's so cool. That's made my day that when I saw that one the first time, I was like, that's just brilliant. Yeah. It's so cool. So that was a selection of the March graduates um, and people that are working towards redefining their impossible. And I think a nice selection this week of um, various different movements as well as stages along those um, steps to whether you want to call it a full graduation or not i don't know if i like that terminology but the mm. idea of um we're, we're graduating on things that you you know previously thought were impossible it's a nice little opportunity just for us to share a few coaching points yeah i think as well so it, it's, we might sort of like pick faults if someone looks at my hand stand or my must look like don't see it like it's negative it's just us giving some opportunity to give some feedback and you can choose to use it or not use it but i think we are super proud of everyone what they're doing Thanks yeah. for sharing with us, guys. Like it, it, it genuinely makes a big difference to us and everybody who's watching it. So keep doing what you're doing and keep sending us the videos. Yeah, if you have a, uh, you're, you've, you've redefined your impossible or whether it's a step along that and you want to share that with us and you want uh, us to, to feature you, then send it in uh, on any of the social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can email um, david at scorecardsearch.com is my personal one or you'll find email on the website. Is there anywhere else? YouTube, anywhere. Um, message us. Let us know. Send a USB in the post. 
DVD floppy disk. It's three, three, <laughs> send a three and a half, three and a half inch floppy <laughs> VHS. That really will only be relevant to people top who are over twenty, over thirty. No one else will know what. But it's three and a half inch floppy. Don't be so rude. <laughs> I can remember the bigger ones. It was like the, even the yeah on the Betamax. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then that was a deep, that was a video player. It, it was the um the, the square ones. It came with like yeah. the, the, the Spectrum. Was it the, the, the Commodore sixty four or something like that? You said it was a junior it. school. <laughs> it's not working. Right, that is far too it's much. One game, but it came with twelve discs. <laughs> Each level had a new disc. Anyway, we digress. Which is very different to the virtual classroom, which is just all online online learning. Um, there's sort of a selection of people there have been uh, redefining them possible following the the plans and the courses um, that are in there. And that is, doesn't require any disk. That just requires well, you and the internet to learn at your own pace. If you'd showed people the virtual classroom in 1985, they'd have thought it was voodoo. <laughs> <laughs> Literally magic. Where's, where did you actually do that? Well, because they probably didn't have the internet today in 1985. This is probably about half an hour long. <laughs> right. We're ready to uh, you take us home, Tim. Until next month. Class this month.